Hello everyone, welcome to Retro Tech Academy. And today we're taking another look at a calibration. Uh, today's gonna be a special episode because I'm gonna be using the 20L5 that we've been talking about. And I might throw this video in there with the 20L5 videos, uh, but it, it's not really gonna be using or calibrating the 20L5 today. Today we're looking specifically at colors. And I've got this smaller, uh, it's just a regular 8 inch, it's from 1999, I think it's 804-2Q. And it is, again, just a smaller Sony PVM, but it's got some major color issues in it. I want to talk a little bit more about colors and how to calibrate for that. Also, these techniques uh, are going to be used on pretty much any kind of CRT as far as the terminology and the adjustments we're going to be making. Now, this one has potentiometers internally in it that I've pulled open. I'm going to show you those pot potentiometers and we're going to go through each setting and we're going to show what it does on the screen here. But the 20L5 is pretty much set and rather than go through and try to manipulate the settings to just make it look bad, I thought we'd look at the uh, one that's already got an issue with it. So first off, let's go ahead and talk about the tools we need today. If you don't have to use potentiometers and you're using a monitor that's more modern, uh, you can go through the service menu. I'll make a video about that, but specifically today we're going to be using potentiometers and we need a good set of screwdrivers. I recommend getting yourself some that are like this. These are just, I've got a bigger one there and a smaller one here. You can get flat or Phillips heads. And this is a good one too sometimes. And it's actually just got it interchangeable parts. But you want something that you can access easily, small. Um, these are, I think they're called um, eyeglass um, screwdrivers. Not this one, but the other ones are. So you're gonna need those to manipulate easily manipulate your potentiometers and get your color dialed in. So let's go ahead and I'm going to pull the camera now closer to the smaller monitor and the potentiometer section and we're going to talk about the adjustments specifically we'll be making today. Okay so let's scoot in closer here to our board and I'm doing this freehand today so I'm going to try to make it not jerky. So we're looking at here our color potentiometers, this set of eight. Uh, and really, these bottom four, we're only going to use one of those to control our color. That's this far left one. It says this sub-hue. That actually keeps um, the tint of our uh, whole CRT. It's either going to be a reddish tint or a bluish tint, depending on how we turn that. Also down here, we've got some gain controls. You can see they're marked. We've got a blue gain and a green gain. And then we've got a cutoff control, which is a green cutoff and a blue cutoff. You'll notice there's no red cutoff control here and there's no red gain control. Now there is a red, there are some red controls around the front of the monitor that I'll take you to next, but we're gonna start using these to make most of our adjustments, these five. The two cutoffs over here and the two gains. And then this hue. But also this potentiometer over here, it manages to control the screen uh, color too. And it's marked with some other, I can't really read it over here, it says matrix, but I believe it says RGB color. Um, on the other side. I can't really make it out because it's blocked out by some plastic but I did notice that turning this potentiometer actually changes the color but most of the time when you're looking at colors um, you're going to be looking for something that says gains and cutoffs and sometimes it can say biases and things or hue is another setting but mostly gains and cutoffs and this is a smaller monitor so its board has to be moved away from the neck board. A lot of the times these potentiometers will be on the neck board specifically for your monitor. Let's go ahead and while I've got it, the camera here, let's look at the front of the monitor on this little one. And you see I've got a second set of controls here. And like I said, there's a red, a green, and a blue. And then I've got some more gain and some bias over here, which bias, again, cut off is uh, another word for it. So we're going to uh, be able to use these. There are more potentiometers in here that may help us adjust a little bit more beyond what those smaller ones do on the side. Something that you will want to use here is uh, this blue only gun. That does help you uh, when you're calibrating colors because it shines just one color, just your blue color. And you can tell on the screen when it's not looking right. When you push blue only, it shouldn't look quite like this. For example, um, this is another thing I want to show you on here that I've got two 
Let's do blue only. So there, that's a good example. Blue only on a properly calibrated monitor should show gray colors like this. And you can see right here, we've got too much pink and red um, naturally on our gray screens. So blue only helps you get a gray screen only. And uh, that blue gun shoots and, and gives you that colors. But just so you know, it, colors are very hard to calibrate uh, just based on having one monitor. So if you don't have a second monitor that's like a, a, a calibration monitor to show you what good color is, it's very tricky and very hard to get something set properly. Um, let's also talk about what we're using today to calibrate this. You can tell some of you might have noticed this. I get asked this question a lot, but this 240p test patterns, 240p is going to be um, the most once you get it dialed in in 240p, everything else seems to fall into place, uh, especially like 480i isn't nearly as finicky as 240p. That's going to that's gonna be everything is perfect on your RGB and color and geometry. Uh, whenever you do it on 240p, it seems to translate better out to the higher resolutions. But again, we've got two, one calibrated correctly and one that we're trying to calibrate. So we need to have that set up like that. Um, I'm using, again, the Super Nintendo with RGB mod and on the 240p test suite, I want to use uh, this. Actually, I like this color bar here because it gives me the colors and it gives me four colors here. It gives me the uh, as scales and I get an orange up here so I can guide off of and then I can switch over and get rid of the text and just have this grid pattern. Uh, it's a very good one to color calibrate. Another one is if you're having trouble, you can use the gray bars, but what I like to use is this white RGB screen. So what you can do here is try to get these screens closer to an actual color. You can start with black and see it's at a good black position. So red's not far off, but green is extremely off. Blue's not far off. White is extremely far off. So that's what you've got there to work with, white, green, blue. So you can do that. Um, to do a, a screen, you can get this gray ramp also to help because grays are going to be a good tail. As you adjust these things, you won't be able to see a lot. Um, you make some adjustments, but you won't see a lot of the things easily on a screen with a lot of colors, like something like this. It's going to be easier to see what's going on if you have it on a single color. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch the screen over to gray. We're going to start turning some of these potentiometers. We're going to start with the cutoffs. We're going to start just turning them up. And unfortunately, this is a very tedious job. You just have to just kind of do it and see how it, it reacts compared to the bottom screen. And then um, we'll just kind of see how one looks compared to the other. And it would just be more adjustments, more adjustments, more adjustments. I'd like to start off with our color bars. And... There's a lot going on on this screen, but it does give us a lot of good to look at. We're going to try to uniformly, you can see down here, this is our goal, and this is where we're at. So again, I'm just looking at these potentiometers in the back. I'm going to show you what some of them do. I like to start with the cutoff side. So if I take this blue cutoff and start to turn it, you see how these colors start to show up. Now, with everything turned down, we should have a mostly red screen, which we do. So it's good to take it and turn these cutoffs, green and blue, up a little bit. Now see, look at that. When I turn that green cutoff up a little bit more, and then I turn the blue cutoff, we're starting to get a little bit other colors involved in there, which is good. And then we're going to go to the gains after the cutoffs and kind of follow in line with that. And that just kind of brightens up our colors a little bit. We've still got an overall red tint to that screen. Now it's starting to get a bluer tint, but I still see a red tint. Okay, so again, first I went with the blue and green cutoffs and I adjusted, and now I'm doing the blue and green gains and I'm adjusting, but I'm still not getting things exactly right. So then I want to go ahead and start adjusting this hue, and you see what that does? That again either introduces more red or it gets it cooled down to a blue. And I'm still having some issues where my white's over here not exactly coming out white. Everything's looking a little red and blue. And so, now I'm turning this other one that's a screen matrix, um, where the, the RGB's potentiometer to the left, 
just to see if that's going to help any. So I turn it all the way down, that gets completely rid of the red, which makes me think this might be a red gun and control. We don't want to have too much red in there. So I just have to keep finicking with this, and sometimes I'll come in here up front and then I'll start, or start tweaking these. See how you had more red gate now? You don't want to add, I mean, unfortunately, that's what it is. It's just too much doing this by hand. I'll add a little bit more blue. And some of these are not going to have a huge impact on the screen if you've already turned it some. Uh, something else to note, you're, you're going to have to change these for each setting. So if you do have a problem and it's a different input, you may have to change um, if you're not using RGB. But RGB is really the best to calibrate by because everything else has filters and things. Uh, so here's the issue with this monitor. I don't know, one of these guns is not fully working right because I can't get the color to adjust correctly, perfectly, which is probably why I'm having these color issues to begin with. Sometimes you can only get something so good. Let's try some of these sub brightness. So I've got a sub color set in here that brings out my color intensity and I'm not, so I'm not losing my green there, but it, it controls my other one. So it's making me wonder if there's something up with the green controls, because it's just not as bright as the others. And there's some screen brightness, okay. So that's a little bit better, but I still feel like we have some kind of an issue internally with this thing because of that. There's not, um, there's not a whole lot of other adjustments you can make to this that's going to um, fix that at all. I'm, I'm just adjusting the brightness on the flyback a little bit here. And then I'm going to address the convergence, try to get it lined up. But you see, we've still got a tent. Something's not exactly correct on here. But you do have, that's how you make the adjustments. So you could have a number value on there. If you have, a, if you're making an adjustment on this monitor, if but if you're having trouble where it's not completely getting right, like let's look at a different screen. You might be able to see what I'm saying. It's just a little bit too bright, and we're, so we got the screen sub brightness just too high. So there's a sub bright potentiometer that's not really doing anything right now. That's our color. And then our brightness is working. That's a little bit better. But again, see, I can't get the colors just not perfect. It's just not, there's not enough something in there. It's just not, it's not, if I get it, and I get too much red out or too much green in it. So, But you can see how tedious it is because there's no exact, there's a factory default setting for some of these monitors, but not all of them. And if a color starts to go bad, you might either have to do a, a capacitor replacement on your control, your color control board or your neck board, or it might be a problem with your tube where you're actually losing a color on your tube and then things can really look wacky. See, to me, it looks like we're not getting enough of a certain color here. And I, I'm feeling like it might be the green because the green controls aren't as aren't as robust as the others. That's a green control I'm turning, and it's not really making much of a difference. But you can get it better. You can get it usable. But you can also see just you know you can't just it, this one's just not going to get there. I don't think. Um, 
Well, I hope that that kind of explains a little bit more. I do know it's still a big tricky thing getting into colors. Uh, you've got to try to take advantage of the color temperature settings that your monitor has where it'll say 9300 or 6400 on a color temperature setting. If that's possible, use that to test and see if your screen looks good as far as the color is concerned. Otherwise, you have to get in and try to mess with the gains and the biases or cutoff potentiometers slash changes. And so again, the best screens to use for that are going to be solid colors. Let's go ahead and look at those solid color screens one more time just to see what we're looking at. See, I'm still not getting a good white screen. Black's fine. Red's not looking. And see the green. Again, there's something going on here with that green. Because green should not be white like that. It should be green. So, I'm not quite sure what's going on with that green. It's showing me that there's maybe no green coming through. Because, see, like, that's very minimal. That should have a huge impact on that. And that doesn't either. Those are just interesting. So that's what I think. I think this tube might have lost its green color. Because nothing adjusts that to make the green look any better. So that's a good way for you to be able to test what colors aren't working right. Because look, the rest of the colors do show up. Blue, uh, that's white, black, whatever. I mean, red will show up if I turn the red up. I know that. Because we've had a red, all kinds of reds today. So, hmm. there we go. Now let's try this again. Let's see. See, there's that green. It's just not green. And then that makes everything else not work right. So we're not getting a good white screen because we're only getting blue and red shot through there probably. So. If you see something like this, then you can tell, hey, I've got a deeper issue where it's not just a color problem, but it's actually a problem with one of my whole color lines. It's either the color's not coming through the tube or there's a problem on my board. So, but that's a good example of how to troubleshoot through that co color. There's no exact rocket science here. It's all about adjustment, patience, and just keeping with it. Um, I'll probably do more discussions on color because it's just such a complicated subject. I hope that this is at least helps you understand a little bit more. I have a video that I made a couple months ago uh, going through some of the menus and on not this monitor but the 1953 MD which worked for a 20M2 or uh, anyone around that era that has that first sub menu. I went through and showed all the color settings on there, so I'll leave a link to that at the bottom here. But again, if you did find something helpful in this, please let me know and please leave a like. I appreciate you spending time and looking at this a little bit more in thorough depth with me. Have a great day and thanks for watching Retro Tech.